How's it going guys? So as you saw in my last video, we've replaced the old 1520 scraper tractor. Upgraded it, I think. Now uh, with this Hydrostatic International. I haven't gotten a chance to run it too much, but I want to do a little bit of scraping right now. So I'm going to fire it up here. But this tractor is a bit larger. You can see it has larger back wheels and it's just a heavier tractor. Thought I'd throw some diesel into her here quick. So your hydrostat is right here. All you gotta do is push that forward, you start going forward. The farther forward I push it, the faster you go, and then backwards the same way. And then you have your throttle here as well, it's your hand throttle. And there's a paddle down here too. Brake, and then the clutch is right here. It's gonna be a little bit to get used to to have your left hand down here to control your forward and backward rather than shifting like our other tractor. But pretty handy so far, I think. I wanna scrape the dry cow barn here. So there's two alleys up here and back there. We'll chase the cows around to the back first and scrape this out. Every cow milks for about 10 months out of the year and then she'll have two months off right before she has her next calf. So that's what these cows are. They're just chilling in this barn. There you go. All right, I got dad cleaning beds now. I'm just gonna drive the tractor, let him do the manual work. Okay, Dad switched the cows to the back. I'm gonna let him run the tractor to do this second side here. I gotta start mixing feed for the cows, so I'm gonna go work at that now. So I like the tractor. Uh, it's gonna be a little bit to get used to with the hydrostatic transmission. Really, the only downside is you can't see the scraper as well. There's just not as much clearance there over the fenders. I like how it pulls. It definitely pulls better. It's a heavier tractor. Clean my boots off here. So I want to start mixing feed. I want to show you the feed change that's going on right now. We had started feeding out of this big bunk and it just got empty this week. We were kind of transitioning using half out of this bunk and then half out of the next for a few feedings, but now we're completely done with this one. So if you remember in the fall, if you're watching my harvest videos, the plan was to just fit everything in that second bunk over there. We're gonna just fill two this past fall and then it ended up yielding so well that we decided to put some in front of what was in this bunk already. So in here there's actually 2018 silage back farther. It's about halfway back. So it'll be interesting once we feed back through this to see how that old feed's holding up. Should be good. It was fermented well, so it should be stable. But in general, this one's pretty clean. You can see over here we got some spoiled feed though. And we believe we had some rats living in here. 
It's like a tunnel up through here. And they had a hole in the plastic, so you got some oxygen coming through there and got some spoiled feet on this edge. So we're gonna have to throw some away here. It's a little bit frustrating, but in general, it's holding up pretty good. You can see it's on the top here, it's clean. And I like to feel cold silage when you, when you grab it. If it feels warm, that's not good because that means uh, it's molding. When it spoils, it creates heat. So you don't want to feel heat. You want it to store cold and smell kind of sweet. So it smells pretty good, I would say. Now this corner is a little different variety than the one we were feeding there in the middle bunk. And it's, well, they're both good corn silage corns, uh, but this one, it's a little bit better with yield, but then the quality is not quite as good or the, the digestibility. So you kind of got to balance that. You know, you get more, per, more tons per acre, but then maybe less milk per ton. So we're kind of, we're going to watch it closely, see how our production changes with the new silage. So I'm starting to mix feed for the cows now. I'm gonna put grain in, and then we'll get out of the feed room, get forages, and then we'll go out to the bunker silo and get corn silo. Ready to put silage in now. I'm just gonna have to be careful here at the edge. I kind of cleared this top area off right here down to the bottom. I'm not gonna get any of this junk, but the rest of this is all good. Got it run out, cows are happy. They seem to be liking this silage just as good. We're gonna keep a close eye on production and it's always interesting to see how they do with the silage change, especially between two different varieties like this. We'll see how they milk and use that to make decisions this year for what we're gonna be planting. Not all corn silage is created equal and it has a lot to do with what variety you plant and then being able to harvest it at the right time, get it stored properly and everything. So it's it's really important to have quality corn silage. It's not easy to make perfect corn silage every year. Sometimes it doesn't work out, but you can't just go out and buy it. It's not a commodity like dry corn that you can just order and have someone chuck it in and be perfectly fine. So we really prioritize corn silage. 
and you kind of have to live with what you get from your own fields just because it's not something you can haul in from anywhere uh, you, you can buy it other places but it's you got to have someone relatively close that's growing the right stuff for you and you got to be in communication exactly when you can harvest and everything yeah we're, we're thankful we're able to grow all our corn silage on our land that we have I'll see you later.